One of the most fundamental questions that we can ask as a scientist, besides why is there anything rather than nothing, is how does consciousness come about? So the movie in my head, the sound inside my skull, okay? The fact that I can hear you, I can see you, I can feel, I can be upset, I can be sad, I can project myself in the future and I can remember an event in the past. How does a physical system give rise to conscious experience? We do what's called, we reverse engineer the brain. That means we try to take it apart into its individual components. Of course, ultimately the components are elementary particles, but we take it apart at the level that we think is relevant to understand memory, perception, intelligence, consciousness. That's nerve cells. Neurons are the atoms of perception. Neurons and the interconnection, that we believe, or the field in general believes, is a relevant level to understand how we think and how we remember things and how we act. And so it's critically, if we want to understand how the brain works in a normal condition, if we want to understand what happens in mental diseases or other pathologies of the brain, we need to understand the different types of neurons, how they look, how they behave, their morphology, their architecture. And so this is what we're trying to do here. We can use devices that record brain signals directly from the motor cortex of the brain and interpret these signals as movements. And we can use those signals to control robotic arms, for example, or mouse cursors on a screen. And the focus of my research is the physical interface to the brain, how we really connect the brain to these types of devices. You would implant this just above the skull, and then electrodes would be placed on the surface of the brain. Going forward, we want to make these so small that we can embed them directly in the flexible substrate and put it all at the surface of the brain. So wireless is a real game changer in these kinds of devices. One, because they can be implanted in the patient completely with the surgical site closed, eliminating the risk of infection. And it's also important so that um, the subject or the patient can move around naturally in their environment or be monitored from home, as opposed to in a very constrained laboratory or hospital environment. Scientists think about what actually exists and engineers dream what doesn't exist yet. And so once we understand the brain as a natural structure, we can then begin to dream how we can help the brain if it's sick, like if it hears voices or feels persecuted or is depressed or becomes demented. And also ultimately we can think about how to enhance brain function in, uh, in normal people. So those are all tasks that, that engineers do.